three general state and two special states of matter. These are uh, the Bose-Einstein condensate and another one is that plasma state. Bose-Einstein condensate, it is in the extreme cold condition. This is applied for the, uh, the Bose-Einstein condensate is found for the metal of rubidium. Rubidium. So, this may be one uh, short question for you. Syllabus is Sunirmal, you do not know about the, uh, the syllabus. The syllabus is the states of matter and atomic structure. Atomic structure and states of matter. Now, it is the metal rubidium which when cooled is at the temperature that is of absolute zero that is 273 K, then it ultimately becomes in the condensate form that is it is the also called the super cooled state. This state is called Bose Einstein condensate and the plasma state uh, it is the super excited state you can say or the super heated state. And in this state maximum uh, particulates that is the uh, constituent are present in the vapor state and also in the in the ionic form. So, these are the two specific states that is Bose Einstein condensate and plasma state. Now, come to the next part that is the topic starts with the uh, the headline is that the intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces. Now, what are the intermolecular forces active within this molecule? These are classified in different uh, name. So, first of all, uh, you know already the van der Waal forces, the hydrogen bonding, these are also a kind of intermolecular forces, but we have to discuss in part by part. So, the intermolecular forces are divided into dipole dipole interaction. First one is that dipole dipole interaction, next ion dipole interaction, ion dipole interaction. Number 3 is that ion induced dipole, ion induced dipole interaction, this is number 3. Number 4 is that which is uh, popularly known as London force or instantaneous dipolar inter interaction or London force or another name. instantaneous instantaneous dipole this is number 4 and number 5 is there number 5 is the hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding so, let us discuss one by one. First of all, what is dipole dipole interaction? Now, when what is dipole? So, dipole that is uh, when the two pole is generated that is the, uh, the center of positive and negative charge when displaced through any one atom or any one part of the molecule then it will be called as a dipole. One example for dipole in the case of HF in case of HCl. So, from these examples we come to know about when there is a difference in electronegativity. Difference in electronegativity, here also difference in electronegativity. So, when the constituent atom having different in their electronegativity. So, for this reason the electronegativity, the, the electronic pair that is the bonding pair will be attracted towards the more electronegative element and for this reason there is the two poles is generated in the molecule which 
is symbolized as delta plus and delta minus. Why delta? Because here the charge is not completely transfers to the any one particular substituent. Here the dislocation of the charge from the central that is the half of the distance. It re, if it is the half of the distance, then it is displaced towards the more electronegative atom. So, this is the reason for the uh, dipole formation. Now, dipole dipole interaction. So, just come to know about this, we have to take one example that is in case of HCl. So, I am rubbing this part. In case of HCl, so here it is delta plus, delta minus. So, when there is an aggregation of HCl molecule, what will happen? So, here also the HCl, then which part of that molecule will attracted by this part? Obviously, the delta positive part and it will be delta negative. Another molecule that is HCl, so this part will be attracted, this is the delta negative. So, such type of formation that is the arrangement of the molecule according to the dipole then it will be called as dipole dipole interaction what is the consequences of that so these effect that is the dipole dipole interaction all these interactions are giving impact on the physical properties just like the melting point boiling point etc and also the refractive index or such type of physical properties are will be there where the impact of these dipolar forces are observed and what is the, uh, there is a mathematical relation, what is the dipole dipole, what will be the force? It would be the proportional to 1 by R cube, force is 1 by R cube. That means, the distance in between the two nearest substituent, then it will be called as R, then it will be proportional to 1 by R cube. So, this is about dipole dipole interaction and it is found in the case of such type of molecules just like when there is a difference in electronegativity. Next, what is ion dipole interaction? Till now it is not known Sunirmal, it will be uploaded on the website then you will come to know about when the exam will be held. Now come to ion dipole interaction. Now for this I will also take one example here. Just think about one physical process that is when we dissolving some salts that is sodium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium sulphate in water. Okay. Now water it is called as aqua in some times uh, in the inorganic nomenclature and the solvent is there to dissolve the substance and the salt. Now, salt having how many parts? It having two parts cationic part and anionic part. And the solvent makes solvated the cationic and an anionic part uh, differently. And you can come, you have seen already a symbols like that. Suppose in a plus aqueous. What is the meaning of that word? The meaning of that word is that it is solvated. Now, aqua means it is solvated by water molecule. So, Na plus or just suppose NaCl, we want to dissolve NaCl, then Na will be dissociated in the form of Na plus and Cl minus. And later on, the dipole of water molecule, because water itself is a dipole, it is the plus pole, it is the minus pole. Okay. So, this dipolar force interact with the sodium ion because it is also a plus. So, the negative part, uh, sorry, it will be the negative part, it is the positive part. So, the negative part with face towards the Na plus and the two hands that is the two hydrogen atom will be uh, outside. So, this is the hydration. Now, what is hydration or solvation energy? Or uh, what is the reason behind this solubility? Now, first of all, when there is a, uh, we want to dissolve some substances, then at first it will be dissociated into parts, first of all. Next, there is the liberation of energy. What type of energy? This is also called the hydration energy. This type of energy is called hydration energy or aqueation energy. So, when the solvent is water, 
then it is called as aquation energy and when the solvent is in general it is called the hydrated energy aquation energy or solvation energy what is the effect of that solvation energy so it will further continue the process as much the salt will be dissolved so it will increase the amount of salt to dissolve because the energy is liberated which will helps the to dislocate the position of the positive and negative charge in the uh, salt like in kcl the nacl etc suppose on the sulfate because there is a uh, two part in that substance these are electrostatic interaction is there so these forces that is hydration energy or the solvation energy will help to dislocate the center of positive and negative charge so that it becomes hydrated so it is the next part that is ion dipole interaction so you can see that here two parts is there the positive pole and negative pole and this is represented as plus and minus not delta plus or delta minus because there is a exchange of electron in between the constituent this species liberates one electron it will be absorbed or taken up by the another species so it will be represented as uh, complete charge separation but in case of h2o in case of h2o here also we cannot represent it by complete separation of charge here it will be the partial uh, separation of charge and for this reason two delta minus delta plus delta plus will be there so this is about the ion dipolar interaction it will also affects on the solubility and such type of effects next one come to that third one that is ion induced dipole ion induced dipole interaction now what is the meaning of induced 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 dipole is that in presence of some species some uh, constituent present already in the solution and for this the another neutral molecule another neutral molecule will be sepa the charge will be separated on the molecule so what is the example so induced means with in presence of any external substituent a neutral molecule becomes charged so take the example of suppose in a solution of ki in aqua solution of ki if iodine is placed and it is one uh, examples also you cannot dissolve iodine in normal water because the solubility of iodine that is the iodine crystal is very little in water but if in presence of ki it will dissolve very quickly what is the reason behind it so ki can be represented in the equilibrium form k plus plus i minus so here is the as it is an electrolyte uh, the concentration of i minus will be higher in the aqueous solution now iodine is a neutral molecule no charge separation yet but in presence of i minus it will polarize it is the delta minus it is the delta plus and it is also the delta minus so it is the separation of charge and this weak interaction helps to dissolve the iodine in that medium so a very little amount of ki helps to dissolve iodine in aqueous solution but the solubility of iodine in the uh, normal water is very little so this is the example of ion induced dipolar interaction this is the third one now come to the london force or instantaneous dipole that means there is no polarity was there in any of the constituent but due to some reason the instantaneous dipole is created and this is also called popularly this is of uh, name of one scientist that is fritz, fritz london and it was discovered on the year of 1930 it was discovered first by the scientist that is fritz london and for this reason it is also called as london force now come to that example suppose okay before going to that london force there is another 
dipole induced dipole interaction okay as we discussing london force so let's discuss about london force so london force is that for the molecules like chlorine oxygen uh, nitrogen these are non polar and also that about helium neon etc now we know the electronic concept of the structure of atom already so the electrons are the assumed to be a charged cloud and it will surrounding the positive charge of the nucleus now the it is not exactly true that the position of the electron can be represented uh, by its exact position so as it we cannot represent the exact position so there is the uh, dislocation of the positive and negative center for example just it is the center of the positive charge that is nucleus now just assume to be a here is a five electronic system okay now as there is the five electronic system if we bisect it so you can see that three electronic charge are at the left side and two on the right side so here is the the charge density that is negative charge density will be higher in the left case but it will be less in that case so here it will be represented that delta minus it is delta plus so this type of polarity is gained in the neutral molecules also which is discovered by london and it is called as london force and this is the london force and what are the consequences of london force uh, suppose the reactivity sometimes the for the organic molecule and also inorganic uh, some reasons also depends on the london forces and one example of london force in case of organic chemistry is that london force depends on the area connectivity that means uh, if the two molecules are there adjacent to each another then what is the surface area they matched with each another okay so for this reason we can see the difference in boiling point of different pentane that is the normal pentane the isopentane and the uh, tertiary butyl cation just see it the example so n pentane n pentane having the structures CH3 and it's having boiling point about uh, 309 Kelvin, 309 Kelvin. But in case of isopentane, in case of isopentane, the boiling point is found to be. 301 or 30k 301 kelvin so you can see here that bond length that is the length of the molecule is decreases because of only four carbon atom on the straight chain is there in case of 2 to dimethyl propane it is also one isomer of n pentane and its boiling point is found to be around 290 kelvin so you can see the changes in the boiling point and it can be explained with the help of this london force okay so in case of the it is also a physical parameter that is boiling point so i have told you that in case of uh, explaining some physical parameters uh, we will help this kind of force next one is that uh, dipole induced dipole interaction dipole induced dipole previous one was ion induced dipole and it is dipole induced dipole
One example for this, we will take that carbon tetrachloride CCl4 and acetone. Carbon tetrachloride and acetone. CCl4, it is a nonpolar molecule, and another one is acetone. The formula for acetone is CH3 whole twice CO. So CCl4, tetrahedral and acetone, this is the acetone. Now in acetone already a dipole is present because C plus and C minus. So as it is polar, so the title was dipole, so dipole is that acetone and induced dipole. So as if there is no polarity is present, but in presence of such type of dipole, it becomes polarized. So, there is an interaction in between the acetone that is the carbon molecule and the chlorine in between them. So, this type of interaction will be called as dipole induced dipole interaction. So, these are the four types of interaction present in the molecule. Another one that is of special kind which is called as hydrogen bonding. So, Hydrogen bonding is also a type of dipole-dipole interaction. Hydrogen bonding, it is also a type of dipole-dipole. So again we will uh, remember the first point when the dipole dipole interaction was there that means already a polarity is gained in the molecule and as the polarity is gained in the molecule. So just take the example here for the HF hydrogen fluoride, fluorine is the most electronegative part and the hydrogen will be delta positive again HF delta negative delta positive. So this interaction is called as hydrogen bonding and you can also see this type of interaction in case of ethanol, water etc. Just for example in water it is active in that way, it is the delta negative, delta positive, delta positive and with that H, O H, this is the delta negative, H. Okay, and this um, uh, forms a tetrahedral arrangement of the water molecule due to hydrogen bonding and for this reason they are liquid in nature. And ethanol, here also the hydrogen bonding is active because there is also the polarity is gained in between the oxygen and hydrogen molecule and it is uh, for this reason the boiling point is higher than its uh, the homologs. So, this is the consequences of hydrogen bonding. So, five types of intermolecular forces we have known that is dipole dipole interaction, dipole induced dipole interaction, ion dipole interaction, and uh, the instantaneous dipolar interaction, all unknown force, and the special one that is hydrogen bonding. And for hydrogen bonding, here is the um, force that is equal to 1 by r to the power 3 which I discussed on the fall that is just like the dipole-dipole uh, interaction. But in case of the instantaneous dipole it will be proportional to 1 by r to the power 6. So in case of instantaneous dipole the force acting in between them it is proportional to 1 by r to the power 6 but in case of dipole-dipole interaction it is proportional to 1 by r to the power 3 where r is the internuclear distance. This is about the uh, interactive forces in the molecule. Now, the what are the impact of thermal and intermolecular interaction on the states of matter? Now, just see one flow chart that ice to water 
to water vapor or vapor. So, how we can change it by applying heat and the reverse process that is extracting heat we can change from ice to water to water vapor. Now, what is the changes in the uh, bonding pattern? So, in ice as it is uh, you can see that it is in solid form and in solid what happen it having a defi definite definite crystallography definite crystallography which we will know in class 12 there was definite arrangement and the ice the water molecules are tetrahedrally surrounded the water molecules and for this reason they got a definite shape water it is uh, the intermolecular forces are somehow uh, labile. So, for this reason it is comes in the liquid form and in vapor it is uh, the intermolecular forces are negligible for this reason they are generally comes in the vapor form or in the airy form. Okay. So, definite crystallography is there and which can be uh, released or which can be loose by using heat as a parameter. So, this is the effect that heat can change from states of matter from one state to another and excluding of heat can change the reverse path. Okay. Next step is that what is uh, the gaseous states of matter. So, the gaseous state we know already that is the intermolecular forces are negligible here they can be uh, they can uh, occupy the volume of the confined space where they keep Okay. So, these are the gases and it can be spread throughout the uh, whole periphery where it kept. Okay. So, gas having very low density and lighter than the liquids and solid and intermolecular forces are also negligible okay. and it can be it is easily and another one is that gases are highly compressible. What are the parameters? compressible that means in applying there are two parameters one is pressure another one is temperature and in optimum pressure and temperature gas can be liquefied to a in the liquefied form. So, these are uh, the parameters that gas can be compressible which is highly compressible, but liquid it is uh, no change on the pressure and temperature solid having no effect on that. So, these are the physical properties of gases. Okay. On the next day, we will start the next part of that. So, bye everyone.